What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we've been talking about this title for quite some time on when it was going to be released, when they're going to make the announcements, who's going to be in this, what is it going to be about. Deadpool 3. We've been seeing the news as to who will be coming to this film, to who will make a cameo in this film, and there's a bunch of people who haven't worked in a while. They need this. So they, of course, are going to come back. Brian, come on. We haven't seen... Well, at least one of them's working a lot. She's just not working on screen. She doesn't need the money. Halle? No, (laughs) T-Swift. Oh! T-Swift don't need the money. But (laughs) (laughs) she definitely don't need the money. (laughs) But it's it's just a... It's just a poor attempt to try to get... I don't know. I just... Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, let's well, Brian, dive in. Tell me, it. tell me what you what you think of all the cameos that will be appearing in Deadpool 3. I've already said this is uh and we already sort of labeled it as a uh what is it? A a, a diversion? Yeah. That's of right. A a film? Diversion, a distraction. Uh, distraction. That's actually what, distraction. Exactly what this has become, <laughs> I'm telling you. This is a sh- this is what you call a show. This is yeah. Barnum's and Bailey's yes. show. This is gonna be br- take bringing in all the hits from all, all from all the past uh, characters that were involved in the X Men. This is putting a lid on all of that. Hundred percent. I you know, I think every time a news story about this movie or Secret Wars, and I want to link those two projects mm-hmm. here, comes out. I just roll my eyes because I know I have to see these and my expectations for how much I'm going to like it just goes one notch lower. I I must have missed the series of hugely successful and profitable cameo fest films that came out in the last few years because the way the studios are acting and the way these projects are acting, it's like there's this tried and true formula that if you have a certain number of A-listers putting on a costume, you're guaranteed a billion, a billion five, or, or some number. That's not been the case. The opposite has been true, right? We talked about Doctor Strange too, like the mess that it was, you know, the cameo fan service scene came and went. It's now mostly, I think it's become more derided in, in, in hindsight than it even was at the time. We just went through this with The Flash being a massive disappointment. And obviously you get sort of the cameo fest in the sort of multiverse Superman um, coming together. That didn't work. You know, even 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 the characters that were more than cameos, right? Like Michael Keaton's Batman, it was quite effective. Like that didn't generate any interest. And yet here we are with a project that I think my frustration is I think had some gold in it just by virtue of Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. And they're just, I don't know if it's Reynolds. I don't know if it's Marvel. I don't know if it's Disney. I don't know if it's all of them. They are muddying the waters by drawing in. I mean, you mentioned people who haven't done it in a while. How about the people who never got to do it are getting their shot? I missed a miss where we owed Channing Tatum his turn as Gambit. We really do? Are we sure? I I guess I wasn't certain that the fans really wanted to see Jennifer Garner become Elektra and wield some size again. Again. I thought thought we wanted that Daredevil Elektra combo to go away for good, which then leaves all the classic Fox X-Men and so forth. And yeah, like I just fail to see how you're going to get you took something very simple and very guaranteed, which is this kind of buddy cop type of formula for a Deadpool movie. And you've complicated it into something that is clearly designed for clickbait and is designed to get a big opening weekend. But there's just no way this is going anywhere because you look at mm. the names on this list and I, I you know, I, we were, I didn't even, you can talk about Taylor Swift if you want, but you look <laughs> at the names that are on this list there is no future for any of these characters. 
Like, are you telling me that Halle Berry is now going to do a decade of storm now? Come on. No, certainly. So not. why are we, why are we bothering with this? This movie didn't need this. Why are we bothering with this? It's just, it's making the odds. This movie is a mess and a disappointment higher in my estimation. Yeah. Is making the superhero genre a joke, actually, is, is what I think is, is making it. That's what I think is making it. Because Ryan Reynolds is, is a jokester. Deadpool, his character is joking around and doing yeah, some cool stuff. <clears throat> but this is going to be times 10. Let's, 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 real, let's check a look, Brian, at um, real okay, quick. Okay, so confirmed, as we said, Ele uh, Jennifer Garner as Elektra confirmed that's actually official now we are getting back all the characters from deadpool one and two i don't consider them cameos even if the even if the roles are small because they were part of the franchise that's fine i have no problem with negasonic teenage warhead and um and vanessa and all those characters coming back that's fine hugh jackman we know is not a cameo he's a major major part uh owen wilson's mobius in this movie apparently to help service the multiversal angle and okay. time travel element of this Okay. Um, there is a reference to Cable, so I don't know if that means Josh Brolin's Cable is reappearing from Deadpool 2, but that's apparently part of the plot device. Yes, the 20th Century Fox X crew, you got Halle Berry, Famke Jansen yeah. are back. Yeah. Br Brian Cox as Stryker from X2 way back in the day. It's like, back. why though? Rebecca Romaine as Mystique, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, and then it gets even worse. So now, now, okay, at least those people were in movies that made a lot of money and were popular at one point in time as part of the X franchise. So we couldn't leave the Garner thing alone. So now there's rumors going around that Affleck as Daredevil is going to show up as if he hasn't had enough of, of this genre. Yeah. Julian McMahon's Doctor Doom from the Tim Story Fantastic Four movies is rumored for reasons I don't understand. Taylor Swift as Dazzler. Yes. Channing Tatum as Gambit. And then they're trying to make the Taron Edgerton Wolverine variant come to life in a cameo. What? A movie. This is not a movie. This is a You're show. You're right. It's a circus. It's a circus. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's... We may be proven wrong because we had our doubts about some other movies and they turned out to be okay. Um, and some that we thought we had um, high hopes for, and they turned out to be wrong. So we could be wrong about this. You know, when they first announced Hugh Jackman coming back, I was higher on this than you were, because I was like, well, the two of them can make some magic together in this form. Yeah. I'm interested to see that. There's two, there's just too many names here. Like either, right? How either, much time are you going to spend on them? Yeah. yeah, and it's like either this is a massive overhype, and it's going to be like, the portal scene in Endgame, and we get like one camera shot of all these people, in which case it was like much ado about nothing. Why do we bother? <laughs> or they're actually going to try to give them scenes, which would be more like Doctor Strange 2, which is like, we've now, it's interesting, we've now since confirmed that that scene in Doctor Strange 2 was actually the amalgamation of a lot of different scenes because not no two of those actors were sharing the screen at the same time because of COVID. They were shot individually and then spliced together. So if they're going to try to do that, that's just a waste. Like, who's going to be talking about that? I mean, you talk about it for five minutes. You're like, oh, I didn't know they were going to be in the movie. At the end of the day, I don't know what we're getting. I know it has to do with, because you, you mentioned Mobius, um, I see what they're trying to do. And, I, and I've always had this idea that they're using this multiverse as a as a as a as a way to fit this in and i'm pretty sure they thought this through brian my question is have they gone overboard with what they're trying to do we don't know we don't know um we're speculating that this is not gonna turn out to be um anything that further alongs the mcu uh, with regards to story or any other uh, movie that it will connect to. We don't know what this will be. I'm pretty certain, Brian, I feel 
that this will be the beginning of the end to, until we get the reboot with Secret Wars. As beloved as Hugh Jackman has become in the role of Wolverine, this is a guy who's been as guilty of this as anybody, if you think about it, right? Like, if you go back to when they rebooted X-Men at Fox the first time, he has that cameo in first class, right? Where they're recruiting and he's at the bar and he tells them to F off, right? It's like, oh, there's Hugh Jackman. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And then he has a major starring part in Days of Futures Past, which to me was the proper bookend for yeah. these characters. It was a good movie. It's still a yes. good movie. And he has a major role in that. And then I totally forgot this, that he he had a cameo in X-Men Apocalypse. I totally forgot that scene where they bust into Stryker's facility and there's Weapon X. Ah, yes. Terror. I forgot. I, I saw that scene the other day on television. I was like, Hugh was in this movie too. <laughs> so he's already done this. And I saw in the news the other thing to bring Secret Wars, as you mentioned, into this, which is also aiming to be a cameo fest to try and, I don't know, save save what's left of the MCU. I saw a story that Hugh Jackman behind the scenes is pushing that he would like to have a major, major role, role in Secret Wars. In that role. And like, look, he's a big star. He's done this. But this is why you can't have this happen. Because if you're trying to tell a story and, and you got this noise going on and these actors with egos trying to get theirs as part of it, you're doomed. Doomed. Rock moves. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know, man. All we can do here is sit and, and, and wait to see what happens with Deadpool 3 before we even move on to Secret Wars and Hugh Jackman's demand about having a major role in this. I don't know. But think about, like, like think about if we were building to Avengers 1 in 2012. And it'd be like, we got to Avengers 1, these movies had some momentum, and Wesley Snipes was like, Blade's going to be the star of Avengers 1. <laughs> like, how would, there's just no way that would have worked, right? You, It's yeah. laughable. So, like, yeah. as credible as Hugh Jackman is in the Wolverine part, Secret Wars is supposed to be the culmination of this entire saga. If you're going to hand a top build role to Wolverine, when Wolverine hasn't been part of the journey, like tell me how that's supposed to be some epic conclusion. Wolverine is being ruined, I think, with all this stuff. It's like when the new Wolverine comes, who's gonna care, really? I don't know, unless they're doing differently. I don't I don't know how no, you got it. Doing. We've seen this happen before with characters. We've seen this happen before with characters where they get overexposed and you get too many versions of them, and all of a sudden, like you lose the impact, even if the new version is good. Well, I don't know what has happened at Marvel, but it just feels like this entire thing needs to go away for a while and just sit on the shelf. Kevin and Feige has been infiltrated by the stars. He's been, I guess, tickled too much by the stars and, and you know, and he's I mean, like maybe laughing it's, and hanging it's out with them. Kevin. It's scroll Kevin. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Real Kevin's in the basement somewhere. Yeah. Real Kevin is no longer here. Real, real Kevin has been replaced. Uh, and it is unfortunate that he has lost his mojo. And we have to deal with his possible ego about all this, Brian. We don't know. But the way things have been going, you would think that there was a court, there would be a more. Uh, more confirmation of a course correction and we don't we haven't gotten that we've just seen more and more stuff coming out about what's coming on and how this is going to be done and it's like yo where are we going that's why i feel like i'm out yeah there's new as i said there's a new book coming out this fall rise of the mcu um by joanna robinson that supposedly is going to shed a lot of light Ooh. on how marvel operates that's, that's what i've heard is a lot you learn a lot apparently about how kevin actually runs manages like there's a pre-order on this yeah it's coming out in october i think Ooh. and how i like, kind of like how close he was and is to storylines individual projects like the, the word i've heard is that 
Kevin Feige at his best is closer to a director than you think. That's what I've heard. Interesting. Interesting. We will touch on that when that book comes out, Brian, on our second part of Fire Kevin Feige Part 2. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Deadpool 3 and the Secret Wars cameo, all this stuff going on with the future of the MCU. And is it in good hands with Deadpool 3? Would it be a resurgence or revitalization of the MCU brand with Deadpool 3? I sincerely don't think so. I think this is going to be laughable. But I could be wrong. Let us know in the comment section what you guys think. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!